Hello, I'm Dr. Vaijanta Anand. I'm Associate Professor with Nirmala Niketan College of Social Work, which is affiliated to University of Mumbai. And today I'm going to talk about principles of community practice, which is the title of the lesson, and which is part of the course community organization, which is again part of the subject social work education. So let us look at uh, you know, uh, some of the information which I would like to give you with regard to this. This particular module helps in understanding general concepts and meaning of community practice. Uh, earlier we had looked at community uh, in the value framework, but this basically looks at community practice. What are the principles involved in community practice? How do you, uh, you know, understand the universal principles of community practice and application aspect of it. Uh, we will be also looking at applications of principles in promoting such social justice and also looking at consequences of, uh, you know, addressing the consequences of injustice and oppression. When we say principles of community practice, what do we mean by that? What do we mean by that is, you know, principles are universally accepted or universally applicable uh, you know, for fulfilling the professional workers mandate to promote social justice, which are embodied in the ideals of the profession, correct? So during work, community pra work practitioners, you know, all of us who work in the community, what are we doing? We are basically dealing with injustice, which is meted out to the people. We are talking about, you know, we are dealing with victimization and we are dealing with oppression. Okay. Uh, so in such cases, the practitioners are required to internalize the principles of community practice, which basically upholds social justice and which is basically looking at human rights. Uh, what is the significance of the principle? Okay, The principles of uh, community practice, it acts like a guide. It acts like a guideline uh, when you are practicing. So these principles provide a moral and ethical legitimacy for fieldwork practice. Because when you are working in the community, you are work, uh, roaming around in the slums and you are wondering what exactly guides me. Should I talk? Should I not talk? Should I interact or not interact? How far can I interact? How close can I get to the community? These basically guidelines helps you to determine what exactly is the framework in which I as a community practitioner need to, you know, situate myself, okay. So respecting every human being, regardless of individual differences, variation and looking at their contribution to the society is something which is basic, which we need to look at, okay. Basically, uh, you know, when you are talking about principles, uh, you can look at NASW code of ethics. You can also look at preamble of International Code of Ethics, uh, which uh, basically, uh, you know, have been framed very long time back, like NASW Code of Ethics has come in in 1990. But prior to that was the preamble of, was the International Code of Ethics. So let's look at preamble of it. But I must say that, you know, uh, we need to adapt it to whichever country or whichever community we would be working in. Um, the principles of community organization can be understood and generalized, uh, you know, as guiding rules. So one is rule of right action. What is, what action is the right action? And a value judgment as to what is sound or good community organization. So you are basically talking about whatever action happens in the community because of your intervention, whether it's a right action. And the second is, in terms of value judgment, what is the sound, good community organization? That is what you are looking at. So the principles are basically you have to keep in mind that they are aligned with the general principles of democracy, self-reliance, cooperation, partnership, transparency and sustainability. And they are shaped by an understanding of the social forces, uh, whereby you understand uh, you know, various empirical work which have happened in the group and community and the knowledge base which is, uh, you know, basically providing us an understanding of the communities. Um, in the earlier uh, lesson when we were looking at value framework, we were referring to Mare Ross. This time we will be looking at Arthur Denham who has written again a lot on community organization, which is a good 
guiding kind of a uh, book Uh, which we can refer to whenever we are talking about community practice uh, he has written a lot uh, in his book you know related to community organization in 1958 he is talking about 28 suggested principles of community organization so 28 suggested principle can be grouped under seven headings you know let us look at these seven headings again like maria ross Dunham also talks about democracy and social welfare. He talks about community roots for community programs because many times what happens is you have community program which do not have community roots. You know you might have uh, toilets constructed uh, which you may feel that you know they are all suitable. They are there in the places and you have built very good toilets, but people do not feel that they belong to them. so obviously there is no accountability there is no sense of belonging so within a given time either the toilets are you know they remain unused or you know they are broken into into or pilferage happens basically because you do not have you have not built these services with community roots okay so one has to have citizens understanding there has to be a support and participation you cannot build Uh, you know like after earthquake there is a tendency to go and build houses and then you uh, you know you land up seeing these houses used being used as cattle sheds and people are staying outside in the open why basically you know when you are developing these kind of programs there has not been any kind of uh, participation from the people and you have there have not been any kind of community roots you have built built up houses uh, for the people who are using who have lot of cattle and they have they need cattle sheds and or the communities basically are using fuel for cooking and all that which needs open space so if since you have not taken all this into consideration they were not included in designing the houses these houses remain again unused and people are again living outside building their own structures which according to you may not be houses there has to be cooperation because unless there is cooperation uh, you know community organization cannot happen you also talk about social welfare programs but one needs to talk about you know adequacy in terms of distribution uh, you know whenever you are talking about social welfare programs are they reaching out to right people are they reaching out to everybody and are you only talking about reaching out to the people who are facing problem or are you engaging in prevention which we had earlier talked about that one needs to also get engaged in preventing the problems from occurring again and again so uh, you know like i gave example uh, if you have built toilets and you think that open defecation as an issue you are resolving just by building toilets and those toilets get broken up the issue of open defecation will keep happening again and again so that is something which you need to understand so all of these seven uh, which are like uh, you know aspects which again can be further elaborated needs to be kept in mind when you are talking about community practice okay he also specified uh, you know along with dunham we need to also go back to ross ross in 1967 when he was talking about community organization he has specified uh, you know certain principles okay uh, like you know fundamental ideas with regard to initiation and continuation of community organization okay what are these uh, uh, whenever you are working in the community you are looking at discontent with the existing condition you know people are not happy okay and there is a need for initiating or you know developing or you know initiating some kind of association a feeling that uh, you know this community situation needs to be changed it is wrong and something new or something different has to come in so uh, that is the common motivation does the community feel that if they feel that then only they will be able to overcome the problem okay so now when you are talking about discontent it should be focused and channelized into organization rather than remaining at the discontent level which leads to probably conflictual kind of situation with no solution okay so when you are looking at discontent then the discontent is 
transformed into community organization which includes planning which takes into consideration that you know you know what are the specific problems people have okay so this content is focused and it it looks at certain aspects which basically can be uh, you know looked for in terms of providing some kind of solution which emerges from the people itself okay uh, you know for example suppose uh, the discontent is there is no water and uh, the village uh, community is talking about no water because there is one particular water tanker which gets uh, you know uh, empty uh, or there is no water coming out of it after 6 months so the idea by the community by the government officers may be that build another tanker okay but one might realize if you sit with the community and look at the discontent because discontent is where this tanker is going to be built will it will the uh, you know uh, the people who are marginalized will will they have access to this community tanker or the tanker which is being built but the solution may be very very simple like it has happened in one of the villages where uh, community practice where the people were working that the tanker the tap which was there on the tanker was in the middle of the tank so the tap as soon as it was lowered the position of the tap when it was lowered people had access to entire tank and which actually resolved the problem of water for whole year so there was no need of actually building another tank but if you do not have this kind of uh, you know a dialogue or process whereby people bring in their discontent and they also bring in reasons for the discontent you will not be able to work so that is the uh, you know principle that we need to have some kind of initiation of community organization which is sustainable which is based in the people and where people are engaged in providing solution um the association or when you bring people together they must involve leader but leaders can be formal as well as informal like you know if you work with the construction workers uh, the initially people who would come ahead as leaders would be the exploitative uh, you know le- uh, the agents actually the people who are basically bringing these groups of construction workers they will face you and they will tell you they are the leaders are they the leaders identified by the people or you know accepted by the community or are they the leaders because they have promoted themselves as lead this kind of leadership will not lead the community anywhere so one need to look at what exactly is the association which is emerging how democratic it is what exactly is the process in which uh, you know the uh, it is it becomes acceptable by everybody in the community so one has to probably wait out or you know see that you know the people feel encouraged or empowered enough to choose their own leaders who are effective and not because they fear some people or not because there are power dynamics involved in it so this would include activities which encourages you know this kind of functioning where you know people are able to bring out their emotions they are able to look at their own members and which also reinforces their loyalty to those goals more to the towards the goals or more to the value of you know the uh, issue of unity among the people rather than choosing somebody just because that person is uh, you know there or is willing to take the leadership uh, when you are talking about association it basically seeks to utilize and manifest uh, utilize the manifest and latent goodwill which exists in the community so what are you basically doing that you know you are looking at community leaders you know you're basically looking at community leaders who can be utilized why do you want to uh, you know look at community leaders because they basically help us to understand what community needs or you know they they are the uh, way in which you can communicate with community groups they are the people who probably will make us understand what are the real and felt needs or concerns of the people so the wrong community leaders may not be able to reach us to the marginalized or the exploited groups so it becomes very you know imperative that your association with the people is guided by reaching out to the excluded groups and not just by becoming acquainted with the community as a whole uh, 
so you know what is the methodology you know through this association basically you are seeking support uh, you know from the people for uh, implementing programs or developing an understanding of the community itself so any association it must develop active and effective lines of communication so these lines of communication needn't be only leader, leader uh, specific you it should be a via way in which you can reach out to smaller groups uh, it might be like you know you might say hello to the community leader who is self proclaimed leader but slowly you are able to set him aside and develop forays into uh, you know the marginalized groups so that you may not need this particular leader you are able to develop leaders among the marginalized groups who are able to face the said leader and are able to bring transformative changes in the community um the association should seek to support and strengthen the groups which it brings together in cooperation or you know in in a cooperative work because people have to come together that would mean a community which has diverse groups each groups needs to represent itself in the you know when they come together and that representation happens if you are able to associate yourself with different kind of groups okay so association should be flexible in its organizational uh, you know procedure without dis disrupting its regular decision making routines so the opportunity to use a variety of methods in undertaking proceedings of the association is very important okay so association should develop a proper pace of its work because it you know the association need to uh, you know first be representative of various groups in the community and it should have some kind of a routine some kind of uh, you know establishment of objectives which are agreed upon by everybody and this pace of work will determine how fast or what would be the process which would get in which all of them will get engaged in in achieving particular kind of goals as uh, mare ross says the association should seek to develop effective leaders so association should not be formed by the leaders actually association should lead to development of effective leaders so association must develop strength stability and prestige in the community so it might be a community based organization which has been formed of or it might be even a self help group uh, there are lots of example in india when you are looking at various kind of uh, you know villages where self help groups have come together and have been able to play a very important role in decision making at the gram panchayat level or at the local democratic uh, processes basically because they have been able to get prestige in the community they have strength and ability and the leadership has emerged from among them instead of leaders which are already there because of some or the other political context so this is very important because this basically association you know which has support in the community which is participative and inclusive becomes the symbol of community cooperation siddiqui is another person who has evolved a set of eight principles to guide community organization practitioners what are this uh, one is principle of specific objective what siddiqui says is that you know we need to have specific objectives you know of working with different clan groups on one hand and formulating specific community oriented objectives because one may start working through school with the children so you might have okay i'm working with you know trying to bring these children back to the school but that requires that you know you need to tackle the issues which are faced by the community maybe you know the school is not friendly or maybe the community is not feeling the school is friendly so when you are uh, working on these kind of issues you are working at the individual child which is not going to the school but at the same time you are also looking at what are the specific problems related to the community and developing your objective so that is principle of specific objective you are looking at principle of planning it implies developing a blueprint for entire work which need to be undertaken in terms of programs finance resource requirement personal requirements space etc 
but many times when you look at these kind of principles you have to keep in mind that it's not you alone who should be developing this whole blueprint it's not the organization which you belong to will develop all these things the community participation becomes imperative because people will be sitting with you developing a blueprint for the entire work or you might develop a program which is unsuitable for worker like in hiv aids you might come up with entire set of uh, you know informative pamphlets and things like that and you realize that you are working with various kinds of groups uh, you know and they speak a different language or they are not even literate okay and they are not able to read whatever you have printed out so all that efforts which you have made will be useless unless the community gets engaged in developing these uh, programs the principle of people's participation it goes along with a principle of planning because unless and until people participate when i talk about participation it does not mean that they give their point of view it would mean that they feel they are the stakeholders you know they are sitting with you and telling you how to strategize and how to work like you know with the uh, construction workers many time you may feel that you need to work on a particular issue but the construction workers may feel that no i don't think you need to work on this issue let's work on something which is much more meaningful uh, work on health our children are you know being born on the construction sites and uh, you know our women are suffering most of the time because they deliver the babies so mat maternal mortality infant mortality is very high so when you are talking about wages and when you are talking about discrimination they would say that you know do not work on that please see to it that our women are able to deliver in a safer kind of environment and you know they are able to have access to health services so one need to include people's participation and there has to be principle of intergroup approach where the groups can come together and they are able to find uh, you know make a wider kind of uh, you know association which will be able to address the issues of the community principle of democratic functioning it needless to say it goes along with the participation that would mean that every single group in the community has a right to express their point of view so there has to be a kind of a process of coming together to a consensus or collaborative or coming to a conclusion with the principle of democratic functioning so there has to be uh, you know one has to understand that you know democrats uh, democratic functioning can happen only if there is a flexibility so when you have flexibility in approach to organization there is no rigidity in your understanding of the community organization you are able to accommodate people with varied abilities to function effectively so if you are talking about children's education sometime even including children in decision making with regard to school resources or educational resources will lead to better kind of functioning of the education system principle of optimum utilization of indigenous resources it includes human resources it includes voluntary labor, uh, labor like uh, in india uh, in you know when you are talking about water issues in rajasthan uh, rajendra singh who is uh, you know mega say award uh, person he believes a lot in voluntary labor so he never enters a community unless and until the whole community decides that this is the place where we would go for water conservation and we all will contribute voluntarily you know provide labor in building up small kinds of check dams and things like that so community volunteers and the physical space which is required for the community organization to come up all that is basically it needs to come from within the communities because otherwise you will be an outsider who would come for some time work there and go away the principle of cultural orientation because a community organization practitioner needs to be accustomed with regard to traditions and values because some of the things which you initially may look at it as superstitions or you know there's something which you don't believe in but people believe in it a lot so one need to understand that these customs and these rituals and uh, you know these traditions are something which are part of the community living and you need to respect it you need to get oriented towards these uh, you know things so following the festivals respecting the fe festivals making your presence feel 
you know felt by the community in these festivals looking at rituals related to death being with the community when these kind of crisis comes in are very important when you are working in the community application of the principles can help the community worker to achieve professionalism in practice but when you are talking about you know achieving professionalism in the practice you need to keep in mind that community organization is means and it's not an end you have organized the people or communities to meet certain needs it does not mean that you you know it it's a full stop when community organization comes up and also community organization should promote community solidarity a practice of democracy which will sustain itself even when you go away from the community so those are the things which whereby community is able to identify discrimination segregation not just when you are present but also on its own as a practice which will be sustained what we need to look at is you know clear identification of the community because we need to understand what exactly is the community we are identifying because the entire community becomes the concern of the practitioner so uh, how do you do it you have to go for fact finding and need assessment programs initiated developed or modified or terminated all of that should be very much rooted in the needs of the community so unless and until you are able to you know assess the needs of the community uh, you will not be able to initiate any program you cannot modify it and neither can you terminate it because you will never understand whether you have actually met the needs of the community uh, one thing which is also very important when you are talking about community practices identifying and mobilizing the local resources it does not make sense bringing resources from outside when the resources are already available in the community itself so uh, one needs to look at you know if you are creating new or additional services one needs to look at what is available have we utilized fully whatever is available so you might develop uh, you know some kind of socio economic program for the women and you may feel that okay they should all uh, you know need to be trained in certain skills okay so and you might bring a person from outside uh, without realizing that traditionally actually they are skilled in many of the aspects so if you are looking talking about textile related issues okay they themselves may be skilled tailors or you, they might be very good in needle work so bringing somebody from outside to teach them needle work won't make sense so you need to basically identify what are the basic resources which are available in the community and based on that probably programs can be developed and for this participative planning is required basically because the more people participate the more meaningful the implementation of program would be and the cycle of implementation and evaluation can continue and more and more programs can emerge from the community itself many times participation is people come for the meeting and they are there you are the one who are talking you are putting across your point of view that's not participation the participation has to be active that means when you are talking about democracy or democratic principle it would mean that people are basically feeling that there is they have a primary stake in its result if a program is getting implemented it has to be sustained and they should be able to look at basically that it's going to impact their community living okay so the community community's right of self determination needs to be respected so if people are saying that this is something we would like to have then it it needs to be respected so community worker is basically concerned with facilitating people's expression and leadership to achieve the goals of the community organization you know so uh, if people are saying that you know we would like to have this particular kind of services initially because it serves some of the needs which are urgent so you might not feel those are urgent but if the community feels those are urgent we need to basically look at those services uh, voluntary cooperation 
as earlier we have said that you know uh, community organization is effective only if people are voluntarily coming together and cooperating okay they need to there is a sense of acceptance when there is a voluntary cooperation okay so there has to be a spirit of cooperation rather than competition and there has to be a, some sense of coordination of efforts. Many times what happens is you might have a competitive, you might land up, uh, you know, encouraging competition among different subgroups in the community, thinking that that will, ex you know, a kind of a, uh, enhance the speed of the implementation of the program, but that becomes detrimental if that competition leads to conflictual situations. So one should see to it that, you know, the, co the sense of cooperation is encouraged instead of competition or conflict. Uh, one has to recognize the, in, you know, involvement of the indigenous leader. Because as, you know, there might be political leaders, there might be uh, leaders who are probably there because they are head of the Gram Panchayat or because they have power structure. But indigenous leader would mean that among the people a leader emerges who may not be actually a leader per se if you you know if you are going to identify but they are the leaders who are accepted they might be a quiet person they might be somebody you know everybody basically are happy to confide in or share their problems and these are the leaders who probably will emerge if you have worked with marginalized groups focus is on bringing out leadership from the marginalized group. Uh, one must avoid the use of authority or any kind of compulsion because when there is a compulsion, you know, uh, people's cooperation and people's participation does not happen. Okay. The dynamic and flexible nature of the program and services is also important because, you know, uh, like, uh, for example, if you are running, if you feel that, you know, construction workers require a uh, skill based training program and you are running a skill based training program in the evening on the construction site. And suddenly after a week, you realize that, you know, the work, uh, you know, the speed of work has, uh, you know, um, has increased because suddenly the cement has come in and uh, workers are not available in the evening because they are working in a double shift. So one need to be flexible and one might have to postpone the completion of the, um, uh, you know, modules of the skill development program and see to it that it gets completed. But keeping it flexible enough to accommodate these kind of uh, situations, okay. Also, it is important to have participatory evaluation because just implementing program does not achieve its goal. People have to assess it. When you're talking about participatory uh, evaluation, you're talking about people who are availing these services or programs or people who have together developed these programs need to sit back and look at the program and say, was it effective? Did it achieve the goals? If not, can we make changes? Can we develop something else? Has it accomplished the goals we have set about? Only then programs will be effective. So in conclusion, what are we saying? That you know, principles of community organization are basically telling us that you know participation of the people keeping the core values of the uh, you know practice of social work is very very important they are the guiding rules but they tell us that you know they are the expression of uh, you know uh, you know these principles basically help us uh, help any kind of students to do the community work to fulfill their own, uh, you know, not only their own, uh, you know, understanding of community work, but it is also the need that every community should strive for just and equitable kind of functioning, which will lead to a just and equitable society. So again, it would be great if you can look at the text, it will give a much more clearer picture and it would be also helpful to look at, you know, Arthur Dunham, Murray Ross and Sindhiki because these books will basically help you to go much more deeper and which will be able to guide you further in your community practice. Thank you.